In this experiment, we are going to be studying how we can try to see how lead can shield our cells from the emissions from a cobalt-60 source. Our source that we're going to be using, probably can't see it real well, so I'm going to read what's on the label for you here, it says that this is one microcurie of cobalt-60 produced in August of 2018 with a half-life of 5.27 years and this is currently March of 2020 so there's not actually one microcurie left. You could for fun figure out exactly how much uh, is left after this amount of time but we're going to go ahead and use the amount that's left and put it in the base of our setup here. Now, uh, it turns out that cobalt-60 emits both gamma and beta emissions. So beta can be blocked by fairly uh, thin materials, but gamma, we have to have something pretty hefty like a sheet of lead in order to block it. So uh, we're going to start with one sheet of lead, which will block all of the beta emissions and some of the gamma emissions. We're going to be using our Geiger counter over here in the rate mode to detect the amount of gamma rays that are getting through to the detector. Now, every time I change the number of sheets of lead, we're going to see how much gamma emissions make it all the way through, right? So every time I do it, I need to start by pushing the reset, which will change the internal counter back to zero and let it start a new minute of counting. So we've started our first minute of counting with one sheet. And let's see what we get here. All right. So we'd want to get five counts at each amount of shielding because we're going to get a pretty good variation at each level because the number of decays is a random event and you get a fair amount of variation going on. So you need multiple readings to get a good average. There's 454 counts per minute or disintegrations per minute for our first reading. Four hundred eighty-nine for our second reading. All right. So if we were to do it three more times, here's three more values that we would get. All right. So you'd want to do at least five readings for each set of conditions. All right. So in the interest of time, I'm going to do two live, and I did three ahead of time, which I'm giving you the values for. All right, so I'm inserting a second sheet of lead, which should then block more of the radiation. So I now have to reset the internal counter so I don't have half a minute with one set of conditions and half a minute with a different set of conditions. So every time I change the conditions, I need to hit the reset button. 
right, so I'll leave those other values up there for you to transcribe while we're uh, grabbing our first reading with two sheets of lead. And as you can see here, that each sheet of lead is 1.2 millimeters thick. So there's our first reading with two sheets. And while we're waiting for the second reading, uh, it'd be good to go ahead and calculate an average for all five readings with one sheet. And you should already have a value for the background radiation uh, based on an earlier experiment or watching uh, another video that I've made. So you want to also calculate what is the value for the uh, average minus the amount of background, right? Because we want to know what is the average that we can attribute just to the source. Okay, 422 is our second reading live, plus here are three more readings with two sheets. Right, so I'm gonna add a third sheet. And hit the reset button. So with those additional readings, you now have enough to be able to calculate an average for two sheets, uh, raw, and then also corrected for the background, assuming you've already got your background reading. Okay, so 426 is our first reading uh, with three sheets. So 426, 441, and these three readings here are our values for three sheets. So I'm adding a fourth sheet and resetting the Geiger counter.
Okay, our first reading is 316 uh, with four sheets. Four twenty two, so three sixteen, four twenty two, and these three values are what we have with four sheets. I'm going to add the fifth and final sheet, reset. While we're waiting for these last ones, go ahead and take your averages for the first four and subtract the background. So there we have 363 as our first reading with five sheets. And 344 as our second reading. So 363, 344, and these three readings here. Give us our final readings for five sheets. I'll give you just a moment to write those down. So now that we have all this great data uh, between the amount of radiation that made it to our detector versus the number of sheets of lead shielding between the source and the detector, what are we going to do with it? Well, our mission is to figure out how much lead would it actually take to block all of the radiation since five sheets didn't get it done. All right, so we're going to need to make an Excel graph. So uh, we want to start by making two columns in Excel. One that's going to have the uh, 
counts that we've got that were already subtracted for the amount of the background. And then we're going to create another column where we can use Excel to take the natural log of those numbers. All right. And we're going to use that column that has the natural log of the background corrected count per minute readings and use that to create the y axis on our graph. And then for the x axis, we want the thickness of metal, the millimeters of metal. So you need to convert the sheets of metal, uh, in this case lead, to millimeters before you make your graph, remembering that each sheet was 1.2 millimeters thick. Right? So you're going to graph that on the x-axis and the uh, background corrected uh, counts, the natural log of that on the y-axis. And then you'll get five points that won't be in a perfect line, uh, but they should at least be in a general trend. Right? So you're gonna add a trend line to that. So if you just right click on any of the data points, you should get a uh, dialog box that comes up that allows you to add a trend line. Right? And then uh, you can also click the box that says display the equation on the graph and you should get a y equals mx plus b equation on your graph. That tells us the correlation uh, between those points. So what we want to know is if we extrapolated that line all the way down to zero radiation, right, how thick would the metal have to be? So we want to set y equal to zero to solve for the x-intercept, right? So that's your mission is to figure out what that thickness would be in millimeters, right? So solve for the x-intercept when our y goes all the way down to zero, when we block all of the radiation. 